What's up developers, I'm that one Unity Dev, and today we'll be creating a 2D day-night cycle. Ever since the good old Pokemon Gold and Silver days, I've always loved the concept of day-night cycles in games, and the way it adds to the immersion. Having made a few myself, I thought it'd be cool to show you guys how I go about doing them. If you are new to game development, or have never given it any thought, you would be surprised at how simple it can actually be. All you need are some sprites, a project that supports 2D lights, some post-processing, and a little bit of code to tie it all together. So with the introductions out of the way, let's make some sprites. For this demo, I decided to create some sprites from scratch. But don't worry, if you want to use copyright free sprites, or even have some already made, you can just use those. I created a couple of characters, a ground sprite, a little house, some stars, a lantern, and some mountains for the background. Also, I decided to do pixel art this time, just to keep things interesting. With the sprites finished, let's create a new URP project. After that's done, I set the camera to orthographic, the background to a solid color, and set my renderer to a new 2D renderer. With the project set up, I go ahead and import the sprites I made. Nothing special here, I just drag and drop them in. In order to see the sprites, I go ahead and add a global light 2D. This will act as our main light source. After the sprites are imported, I go ahead and dress the scene. If you set all of your sprites to different sprite layers, you might notice that the global light 2D is no longer affecting the sprites. To fix this, click on your global light and click the target sorting layers dropdown box and set it to all. This should fix the problem. With the scene dressed, I add a new global volume to the scene. I then check the post-processing checkbox on the camera so we can see it in the game view. Then I go back to the volume and create a new post-processing profile. If you have never used post-processing before, there are a lot of really cool things you can add to bring more life to your scene. But for this demo, all we care about for now is the color adjustment override. With the color adjustment override, lower the post exposure value. As you can see, this now looks like a dark nighttime scene rather than the bright, vibrant one we just had. Now all we need to do is adjust this slider and you can see a mock-up day-night cycle. And it's really that easy. You can experiment with the other overrides and get it to your liking, but just make sure that as you adjust the slider, it reverts back to how it was before. The post-processing is really cool and all, and maybe that's all your game needs, but with our scene dark, I'm going to go a step further and add in some 2D lights. All I do is add in a few 2D point lights and adjust the color, inner radius, outer radius, and fall off. The next step is the stars. I already have a sprite made up, so I just drag and drop them in. After I'm pretty happy with the result, the only thing left to do is to move the slider during runtime. To do this, we'll have to create some sort of a clock. So I go ahead and create a new C -sharp script and attach it to my volume. Code is pretty boring to watch someone type, so instead, I'll put it on screen and just quickly run through it. All I did was create a counter that counts fixed update frames as seconds, and from there, it's just a few if statements away to create minutes, hours, and days. We then use those numbers to move the slider accordingly. We also show the stars and enable the lights when it's dark, and hide the stars and disable the lights when it's day. I also display the time in the top right, and the day in the top left. If you're struggling to get things looking good, I'll have a link to the code in the description as well as the project file itself. And with that, the day and night cycle is finished. It was quite a simple technique, but if you use the same method on other environment assets, you'll see that it's very believable. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and maybe even learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if you use the same technique in your game. But that's all the time we have for this video. See you next time.